Are you tired of using the same old transitions in your videos in a mobile based editing app that's not LumiFusion? Or maybe you're new to video editing and you're looking for the right transitions to use? Well look no further than LumiFusion. If you want to see features in LumiFusion before taking that dive to purchase this app, whether you're on Android, iPhone, iPad or Mac, in today's video I'm going to give you a comprehensive preview of all 66 current transitions available in LumiFusion. Whether you're an amateur or professional, LumiFusion has the perfect transition to take your videos to the next level. From simple cuts to more complex effects, LumiFusion provides a wide range of options when it comes to transitions. You'll see the classic cross dissolve to the dip to black, the push slide, the zoom blur and many more. So if you're ready to take your videos to the next level, let's dive into those LumiFusion transitions and see what creative effects we can achieve. So we're in LumiFusion now on the M1 Mac Mini. I've got my two clips here that I'm going to use for the transitions. So it's just a couple of B-roll shots that I've taken in the past. So I'm going to pop those onto the timeline and I'm going to add the second clip to the timeline. Let's pop it there. So we want our transition to go at the end of the first clip and the start of the second clip. So currently at the moment it's going to be like this which is quite an abrupt change of clip. So what we want to do is have a nice transition from one clip to the next. So if we press this folder button here, we bring up this menu and we go all the way down to transition. So as you can see, we've got all of the transitions here and we'll be going through every single one just so you can see the range of every transition that is available in LumiFusion. So in LumiFusion there is the option to sort of preview what the transition actually does before actually affecting the clips on your timeline. And all you need to do initially is to click on the transition itself. So if we just click cross dissolve here and it gives you that preview of what it actually does. It goes from clip A to clip B. So it's quite easy to add a transition to the timeline. All we need to do is click and hold on the transition that you want. So I'll click on cross dissolve and then you drag it to your the timeline. So you can, with this transition, you can either have it on just clip A, clip B or in between. And because you want a seamless transition from clip A to clip B, we're gonna put it on in between. Now by default, the maximum length of time that this transition will be is one second. But you can, if you click and hold on the edges, you can decrease that time. But in default, the maximum time for this transition is one second. You can increase the length of the, the maximum length of the transition. If we click on the help button in the corner, and you see here, you get your settings and in clip defaults, we can change the time of the transition. So if we want it to go a bit longer, we can increase the maximum time of the transition. If you do make those changes and you will have to delete the transition that you've got and then re-add it to the timeline. So let's just have a look at this cross dissolve. And that was seamless. Let's have a look at the different reasons why you would want to position your transition on say like clip A, just on clip B or in between clip A and B like most people do. If we just, so if we just go on this cross dissolve one, if we put it on the clip A only, then as you can see, there is no dissolve and this one just fades to black. So if we play through this and then it fades to black and then there's quite a sharp cut into clip B. That's why most people like to put it in between clip A and clip B because there's a nice transition from one to the other as opposed to fading down into black and then onto sharply onto clip B. So let's look at the difference if we just add that to clip B. So clip A is playing, you know, sharply cut and then dissolve into clip B. But there is no seamless transition that you usually get. You get that cut off from one clip and then a fade transition into the next one. Not the fade transition from one to the other smoothly, just the sharp cut off and then fade into the next one. That's why most people like to put it in between the clips. Now, as I mentioned before, you've got the length of the clip. So by default, my clip length here is one second. So that full transition is going to run in one second. So that blinking there that you see is going to take one second. But if we decrease the length of the transition, the transition has still got to do the full motion. So in this case, the blink is going to happen a lot quicker. So it's going to happen in 0.14 of a second. So let's play and see that blinking effect even quicker. 
just like that. So if you want to speed up your transitions, then you can decrease the length of the transition itself. But as I said, if you want to prolong that transition, then other than in defaults of one second, you can increase it by going into the settings and increasing that one second to however long you want it. But just remember that your transition will be that long. So the blinking in this case, if it was three seconds, that blinking would take three seconds. So the process of adding transitions to the timeline is exactly the same for each and every single transition. So let's run through the other 65 transitions. There is one transition in LumaFusion which affects the audio track and it is the video cut audio cross. So if we drag this onto our audio track between audio A and audio B, what this will do, this will cause audio A to fade and then fade back up into track B. So this is what it sounds like with the two in. So that's all of the transitions currently in LumaFusion. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite transition? Thanks for watching. Press that like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for videos just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.